in Genesis chapter 21, the last two verses are significant. It really sets the stage. <clears throat> so I discovered uh, something really interesting in chapter 22 of Genesis. Uh, this is the, the where Abraham is told to sacrifice his son Isaac. So this is, uh, and I found something a while back and I made some notes and I just got back to it today to study it and I found something really, really interesting. But it does start in Genesis 21, the last two verses. <clears throat> and Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistine in the Philistines land many days. So he, he uh, made a covenant, had property there. And this is so significant and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Um, Abraham opened the door. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. <clears throat> but this is really significant. This is really significant because there's a phrase here that we're going to dissect that comes up in, in chapter 22. Um, but he called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Um, okay, chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things, the things meaning him calling upon God, him planting a grove and him establishing himself, but really it's, it's that he called upon God, uh, called it on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. There's that word, you know, we've, we talked about that last video, these, these phrases of, of eternal, everlasting. Yeah, okay. Um, and it came to pass, I'm in chapter 22. Where have we heard that before? And it came to pass. After these things that God did did tempt Abraham. If you look at the little footnote, tempt is 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 to prove or to test. So he, he was testing Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, meaning Abraham said, Behold, here I am. This is significant. Here I am. We'll get to, we'll get to the, the other uh, version of that that we're more familiar with. And he said, <clears throat> God did to, to Abraham, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. This is Jerusalem. So he's down in Be Beersheba. And he's told to go to Jerusalem, although it wasn't Jerusalem then, perhaps. Um, Salem, Jerusalem, and go to Mount Moriah, go to Moriah, <clears throat> okay? And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Wow, <clears throat> this is significant. He doesn't say go there and then I'll tell you what to do because I don't. I, he didn't do a bait and switch. He told him right up front why I want you to go there. This idea of bait and switch, I just don't buy it that, that we hear sometimes uh, being taught. Um, <clears throat> you know, that you need to keep all the commandments or you're going to get burned or this or that, but... But in all actuality, you're really not going to, and you're going to make it. So, so you you know you do all these good things, da da da, and then and then it's like a bait and switch. Here's an example of not a bait and switch. He tells him, God tells him right up front, <clears throat> and it all has to do with here I am. Okay, so he tells him what he's going to have to do, and I love it that he says, "Your only son." So, so all this is, is either, either Abraham already understands this, that this is in similitude 
of the only begotten, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, or he's learning it right now. I personally, I think he, he had been taught this and he knew exactly what God was saying. <clears throat> Take your only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. So that's the only thing he left kind of open. He told him everything else. <clears throat> and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offerings and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off, the mountains of Jerusalem, and particularly Mount Moriah. <clears throat> and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offerings and laid it upon Isaac, his son. Isn't this interesting? He knows he's going there to sacrifice his son and he has his son carry the wood. Is that significant? I just picked this up that Christ had to carry his cross. Isaac had to carry the wood for the offering. Think of the significance of that. <clears throat> and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Now, I haven't researched this, but I do know that the, the uh, Native American, or now we say indigenous people, were able to carry um, fire starter that, that was smoldering and carried in a bag in which they could start a fire almost immediately. And it was in a protective, uh, very little oxygen, obviously, but enough. And they were able to um, use this. So Abraham might have had something like that, but where he says fire, it, it could have been just the, the implement to make the fire. Okay, and then a knife. So he carries that, and Isaac carries the wood. Okay, so um, interesting thing there. Okay, and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, and said, My father, and he said, Abraham, here am I, my son. Here am I. So first we've heard, here I am to God, and now we hear, here am I to his son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? This is Isaac speaking, for the burnt offering. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. This is where I really feel that Abraham knew the significance of this. And, and it being a type of the Messiah. A lamb, and God will provide a lamb for a burnt offering, so they went both of them together. Can you even imagine what's going on here? And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son. Now this is probably the point where Isaac's gone, dang, I'm it, I'm it. <clears throat> and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And an angel of the Lord not God, but an angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. 
And he said, Abraham said, here am I. So we have here I am and here am I twice, okay? Now, today I looked this up. Is there any difference between these in, in Hebrew um, meaning? And there is. <clears throat> and here's the difference. Here am I. If, if that is said, and there's a, a name for it in Hebrew, and I, I can't remember it, but what it means is, is here am I for a specific task. Here am I for a specific task. I'm, I'm there for you. I'm, I'll do it for a specific task. If it's here I am, this is so cool. Here I am is... I have no idea, God, what you want me to do, but I'm yours. It's what President Nelson said, a definition of Israel is let God prevail. It's when Jacob was wrestling with the Lord and his like hip got dislocated. It's like one of the coolest stories ever. And then he just went, I give. I'll do whatever you want. I'm yours. And and, and then that's the, the place where that took place, which was just across the Jordan River, <clears throat> the River Jordan. Um, uh, on the Jordan, the, the now Jordan side, where, where the country Jordan would be. And that place became known as Let God Prevail. Well, so let's back up here. So the very first verse of chapter 22 is, <clears throat> and he's already in, 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 in verse 33 and 34 of Genesis 21, he's, he calls upon the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And that's when he just says, I'm yours. I'm yours. That's why those two verses are so significant in my opinion. And it came to pass after these things that God did, did tempt or try or test, prove him, Abraham, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. I've already told you, I'll do whatever you ask. <laughs> that is so cool. Now, here's what I think happens to us quite often, is we're assignment driven in the church. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we're a lot, there's a lot of, here am I, here am I. You know what, I've made a covenant. You want me to go to the cannery? Here am I. You want me to go minister? Here am I. You want me to teach Sunday school? Here am I. You want me to go to girls camp? Here am I. Uh, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Specific tasks we're really, really good at. I think what the prophet is encouraging us, inviting us to do, is saying, here I am. Do with, me, do with me what you want, Heavenly Father. What do you want of me? I'll, I'll do it. <clears throat> it's pretty significant difference. <clears throat> and I, I think... Um, it's also it's also a time of life driven. Typically, when we're younger, married or or single, but of a certain age where we've got some energy and we're involved and we're getting callings and all that, you know, we're doing things. But sometimes later on in life, or sometimes um, just because of our situation where we live, the 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 circumstances, we might not have a lot of. Here am I, uh, callings. And that gives us the opportunity to say, here I am. I'm right here. I'm right here. So th this, is, this is where... Uh, what, what Joseph Smith, I think, was talking about is, it, I think it's section 58, where he says, you know, we shouldn't be compelled to do things. We should do things of our own free will. 
and, and, and work it out with God. What does he want me to do? <clears throat> this is where Abraham was. This is where Abraham was. And this is why the covenant came through him, in my opinion, because he was willing to say, here I am. And when he was given the, uh, the task or the test, he passed it with flying colors. He passed it with flying colors. Now, let's go to another uh, scripture here that has that phrase in it, the task-driven one, the specific task-driven one of, of here am I. Okay, this is in Moses chapter four. I've talked about this scripture before, but it really ties in with this. And I, the Lord God, so, so I'm in verse one of Moses in the Pearl of Great Price, Moses chapter four. And I, the Lord God, spake unto Moses, saying that Satan, whom thou hast commanded in the name of mine only begotten, is the same which was from the beginning. And he came before me, God the Father, he came before me saying, behold, here am I. Here am I, send me. Send me for a specific task. Here am I, send me. Here am I. Send me and I will be thy son and I will redeem all mankind that one soul shall not be lost and surely I will do it. Wherefore, give me thine honor. Verse two, but behold, my beloved son, my only begotten. It doesn't say that, but my beloved son, which was my beloved and chosen from the beginning, said unto me, Father, thy will be done. He let God prevail, God the Father, he let him prevail. He could have said, here I am, here I am. And it would have worked perfectly. So, so let's dissect the, these, these uh, verses here <clears throat> a little bit. So here we have Satan saying, here am I, send me. I will be thy son and I will redeem all mankind, that one soul shall not be lost, and surely I will do it, wherefore give me thine honor. Six times, I or me. <laughs> That's Satan, that's Satan. If we find ourselves in the I, me situation, we've moved over to Satan. Now let's see what Christ said again. But behold, my beloved son, which was my beloved and chosen from the beginning. And see how that just ties in so well with Abraham and Isaac. Um, said unto me, Father, thy will be done and the glory be thine forever. No I and no me from the Savior. Just the will of the Father. I'll do whatever. Here I am. Here I am. Where Satan was, here am I. I'll do the task. And I'll get the honor. So, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing for us to say when we do have a task. It's, it's totally cool. And there's an example of that. I think it's, it, I think it's Isaiah 6 where the, 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 the coals are put on his lips and he's, and he's cleansed from sin. And yeah, so, so I don't wanna put that in a negative tone, even though Satan did it, but, but he wanted to just perform a specific task and get the glory for it. Where Christ said, I'll do whatever. Here I am. 
I think uh, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, and I'm really speaking to myself here, I need, in my life, I really need to do that more often. I need to let God prevail. And I instead of being dutiful and volunteering for tasks and, or or a, a, an assignment's been given and I and I do it. Um, and there's there's reward for that and it's it's good. There's no question. But here I am is a better way, in my opinion. God bless you. Love you. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your comments. Um, if you like it, give me a like. Um, actually, you don't need to do that. It, it, I don't know why I even said that. <laughs> it just comes out. Um, obviously, I like positive feedback and 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 like to hear. But but if it's if, if you have a different opinion or something and and you're respectful, which almost all of you are, um, you know, I don't, I don't mind, you know, hearing a, a different viewpoint. <clears throat> I might fire back at you and say, you know, I, I totally disagree with you, but you know, you can handle that, handle that. But this, this is a, a concept that I, I just, um, uh, I discovered the, 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 the two different things a while back of, of here I am and here am I. Um, but I didn't really know the significance until today. And so I hope that's helpful. And, and I hope we can let God prevail in our lives and be true Israelites. Love you all.